Ten years after the fatal shooting of striking miners in Mirakana, families that lost their, lost their loved ones are yet to receive the compensation promised to them by the government. They say they've not found closure and continue to live with the painful memories. This is their story. There's an eerie silence at Vonda Kopkopi in Marikana. This area now depicts a ghost town. Even the Sabanya still waters, Roland Shaft, is deserted. A decade ago, this calm and serene province in northwest South Africa was a war zone. It started with a tense standoff that ended up in slaughter. Hundreds of police officers watched thousands of striking mine workers gather on a barren hill near South Africa's Marikana Platinum Mine. Some held spears, machetes and wooden clubs. Days into the protests, a major scuffle ensued. Independent researchers would later conclude some had been shot while fleeing or attempting to surrender to the police. The final death toll was 34 workers and 78 more wounded. It was the worst massacre since the end of apartheid in 1994. Ten years is a long time. A decade after her 30-year-old brother was killed, Nolofefe Enoki is still no closer to obtaining justice. Mambush Noki had become the face of the 2012 protests at the Marikana Platinum Mine northwest of Johannesburg, known as the man with the green blanket. The police are the ones that killed my brother because they had said that police arrived and shot at them while they were at Kopi. And there was a lot of police at that time. An official inquiry blamed the deaths and injuries on police tactics, recommending that those responsible be investigated and prosecuted. But a decade on, the Independent Police Investigative Directorate, a police watchdog, said the case was still under investigation. For survivors and the families of victims, the memories are still agonizingly fresh. But for us, it's very painful because we know that we lost some of the parts of ourselves. Now it seems the government doesn't care about us. They are not even trying to do something if they were trying something. It's been 10 years now. Our lives could have long changed for the better. Instead, our lives have become worse. Aisha Fundi says striking workers killed her husband, her son, a mine security guard. As part of reparations, the 49-year-old mother of two boys was offered a job at the mine, but she says that isn't enough. The, so far what we are struggling is that we cannot come to terms with is uh, the way the issue of the compensation was handled by government. We were initially told that all the families would be compensated and the government made that promise. 2018-2019 uh, we realized that they only paid 34 families that their loved ones were killed by the police. President Cyril Ramaphosa was a non-executive director for the mine at the time. He was exonerated from any wrongdoing in the killings after he called for a crackdown on the strikers. Miners, activists and opposition groups want Ramaphosa to apologize after only a few police officials were convicted in the mass shootings as the victims and their relatives still wait for closure. I'm Alison Grange, coming to you from Durban, South Africa.